So may Allah guide us and protect us and have mercy on us. As you know, we are going through the uh, Baqarah. We've been going through Baqarah, the largest surah in the Quran, 286 verses. And we've been going through the whole Baqarah. And last week, we went up to Ayat 233. So we're picking up with 234, inshallah, today. And with the hope of going all the way through and completing the largest surah in the Quran. And it's so comprehensive, so in-depth, you know, Baqarah. It's large, but it gives you so much and it introduces you to so many other things. And as we'll pick up, you know, we've been talking about talaq, divorce, in, in this section of Baqarah. But there's an actual chapter 65 entitled Divorce. But here in Baqarah is presenting to you the rules, the process, etc. Marriage, divorce, etc. And it's really giving you contrast and balance. So as we move forward, in Baqarah, I just went back just to remind us in Ayat 143, where we're told, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa kadalika ja'alnakum ummatan wusta. That we have most certainly made this ummah wusta, and they'll translate as the balanced community, the midway community, the middle community, the balanced community. So this the midway wusta, the middle. Means like if my hands extended, my body is in the middle, but my right arm is here and the left is here. And you see anybody a tightrope, they extend their arm or they have their stick and form like a cross, which represents balance. So we'll start is in the middle. Meaning there's something in the front, something in the back, or something on the right and something on the left. And Allah says in Quran, hopefully we'll get to that because it's right in this section. Salatu will start. And it is understood that's the middle select. And it is understood that that's to be us. Right? So us falls in the middle. Meaning before that, Fajr and Dor. And then after that, it's uh, Maghrib and Isha. We'll start in the middle. Right? Balance. So while we've been in this section, so we'll go now to Ayat 234. And last week, 233, as we know, without going and reading that whole lot yet, is that Allah, just to show you, he started that ayat out with, Well, well, he did do, you the ditna, Allah de hona, haulaini kamilaini. And that is this. If the, the mother has the option, the mother, to nurse her child, breastfeed her child, right? For Galeni, two years, no, Halani, pardon me, Halani, two years, Camilani, two complete years. But then it says, and if the father wants that, then he has to pick up the tab, right? So here, we're going to go through this. It's presenting mother, father, husband, wife, as we've been going through this. Marriage, divorce. The contrast, but it's two things, it's balance, right? Mother, father, husband, wife, together as marriage, divorce, separate, right? So, just remember when you read Quran, this ayat 233, where that starts. Now we go to, and it's, and, it's, and it's long, but now we're going to go to where we are today, ayat 234. And listen how this starts, because it's, it's, it, it, you may overlook the contrast just getting the message, but, but, but watch how this goes. Well, then you... And you know what that says? When those 
those who are among you die. You see, the ayat before that talks about life, right? A child being born and how you are to, to, to deal with the new life, right? The child being breastfed. So here that first ayat talks about mother and father, a child being born and you nurse. Now you go to the next ayat and Allah says, and then what, it, what that says is, when one from among you dies, and he leaves a wife behind. But just to stay right there, this word that, we, that we're looking at, yet the wefa, this wefa really means to complete. You know, mount is dead, death, mount. But here, this wefa, it means to fulfill. So when a person dies, they have fulfilled their life on this earth, no matter what it is. You know what I'm saying? Man, he died so young. In the plan of Allah, you have fulfilled your life, your physical life. So Allah uses that word, when a person has died, they have fulfilled their life. But the ayat before that, is dealing with when a child is born, right? So one is, here's a contrast, life and death, right? Life and death. There's certain things that happen when a child is born, and Allah possesses that. You breastfeed them, etc., etc., read that whole ayat. Now, Allah says, when one from among you passes away, and he leaves a wife behind, a companion, Yet the Rambesona be and Fusi Hina or the Beta Esh Esh Hurin wa Eshura. And her weight, because that's how in this era has been dealing with divorce, marriage, divorce, what's to be done. When one from among us passes away and he leaves a wife behind, her waiting period before she can remarry. Now, we've been going through this, so you get the CD and you keep up. If you're alive and you put it in the in, in, uh, edad, that's three myth, uh, menopause. I mean, not menopause, uh, uh, ministration, period, woman's period, not three months. But she has to have a period three times, okay? If you're divorcing and you put her in edad, right? But if you die, her wait period is a minimum of Arba'ata and listen for the next word Eshhurin Shahira 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 month okay so here Eshhurin wa Eshhurin if you die and you leave your wife behind her wait period before she can remarry is four months and ten days Four months and ten days, a minimum. But, and the reason for that is, if she loves her husband and they have family, there's a grieving period. So, a minimum of four months and a consciousness of this ten days that she can grieve or whatever she needs to do before she can remarry. Okay? Because in that time period, she could be hurt, she could be so vulnerable, she could be off balance. So Allah said, no, you can't marry immediately. You can't marry her. A minimum of four months and ten days if you pass away. So that's how long the sister would have to wait. But that's out of compassion and understanding for her to grieve, etc., and take care of whatever business. But Allah says this. وَإِذَا بَلَقْنَا أَنْجَلَاهُنَا فَلَا جُنَاهَا أَلَيْكُمْ فِي مَا فَأَوْنَا فِي أَنْفُسِهِنَا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And we pointed this out last week. How many times this ma'roof, ma'roof from Arafat, reasonable, honorable, that Allah says, here he says, but when she has completed that term after you have passed away, she has completed the four months and ten days. Allah says, 
Junaha alaykum. There is no sin on her. There's no wrong on her. If she makes it, if she exposes herself for remarriage. That after you pass and the four months, ten days go by, there's no sin on her. If she makes it known in, a, in an honorable, make herself known, build a roof. Make us make it known that she's available for marriage in an honorable way. In a very honorable and dignified, not, not putting on what we know in the back day, some hot pants. I think that's back in our time, right? Mini skirts, hot pants. Or halter or something, you know. Like, man, she was married, man, she was all covered, man. And she ain't never getting married and come out with some hot pants. No. That's why I said, the roof. Make it known in an honorable and a dignified way that you're interested in getting remarried, right? Going straight from Quran. Why? And Allah says, Wallahu be mad that my Lord Khabirun. That Allah is well aware of all that you do. That's Ayat 234. Now we go to 35. Now he speaks to the brothers, to the men, right? Letting you know that she can be married, let it be made known, right? After she complete that period. Wala, no. Wala, junaha alaykum fi ma auratum bihi min kip, min kittum bati nisa'a. And that is this. Now, her husband has passed. And she made it kind of known that she's available. But Allah says, but in that time period, that four months and ten days, Allah said, it's no sin on you if you make a hint that you're interested. You can't make a direct proposal while she's there. But you can hint, as we mentioned last week, we was going to pick up, that you can hint that you're interested in the sister. You know, you know, you can't directly say it, but you can you can hint at it. You can allude to it. You know, like, sister, I think you make somebody a nice man kind of happy. Or something like, how are you going to hint at it, right? So, but the Lord knows us. So he says, it's no sin on that. Now, he set the rules up. That it has, and you know the rules, four months and ten days. But Allah say, now if you hint at it, you're not going to hell fire. Because Allah know you, right? He says, or, our ebnentum fi and fusihim, and fusikum, pardon me. If you keep it inside of yourself that you're interested, that you got to like this sister, there's no sin on you. You say, hey, hey, man, I, I got to get that out, man. She's in that pen. I'm doing wrong. No, Allah says, there's no sin on you if, if you hint at it or if you feel something inside. Why? Listen to what Allah says. It's the same ayat, ayat 235. He says, <laughs> Surely Allah knows. Allah says, because he know that you've been thinking about her. <laughs> so, so he knows that vicar, he says, there's no sin on you. There's no sin on you if you hint at it or if you keep it in your heart that I'm really interested, I like this sister whose husband has passed and she still needs that. And Allah says, because he knows, he's well aware of what you've been thinking about. He says, yes, death, it is thicker. Yes, death, yes, death, and he knows you've been thinking about her. He knows anyway, right? And he says, well, let's to where he do hunasira. And that is this. And he says, but do not make a secret 
promise of a contract. Now she's in that, this, that, I mean, she, she's in that waiting period of four months. You can think about it. You can even hint at it. But don't go up to her and make in a, in a secret way a secret promise to marry because you're forbidden to do it in that time period. And Allah says, Illa antakulu kaulin, here we go again, kaulin ma'aruf. In this, in, this, in this section here where he's talking about marriage, divorce, the word ma'aruf, which is honorable, high understanding, is used more in a sequence, it's used about 12 times in these few ayats, than anywhere else in the Quran in a sequence. It just keeps coming up right within that. Because Allah knows how touchy matters of the heart can be, right? Divorce, marriage. So he keeps saying, do everything in an honorable way, in a reasonable way, in an honorable way, because it can get touchy. We know how it is now in America. You get them lawyers, man. You really get that thing nasty for the money, right? So Allah said, do this in my rules. Always keep it in an honorable way, right? So, so Allah says, but don't make no secret contract. But he says, but it's okay. Illa and dekulu kaulin. Kaulin is word. But, but you can speak to her in an honorable way. You can hint at it. But Allah says, kaulin ma'aruf. And Allah tells in another place that this kaulin ma'aruf, that a kind, honorable way is better than charity followed by injury. Kaulin ma'aruf. Arafat, right? The, the seventh chapter is called Al Araf. Ma'aruf. A high word that brings you up high. So you can speak an honorable, high word, right? Of dignity. But you can't make a secret contract while she's in that period. So we're just going straight through Bakura. And then Allah says, in the same ayat, 235, Wala. Zimu Ukdata Nika Hata Yat Mlugita Bu and Yalahu. And it says this and do not do not draw up a contract for marriage until she has fulfilled the prescribed time. Okay? So Brother passes away, the sister is in a waiting period of four months and ten days. In that period, you can't draw up a marriage contract in that period. I don't care how much you, you, you Google eyes in each other, you're looking at each other. You, 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 can't, you can't do it. You can't do it in secret, you can't do it in open, but you can hint at it, right? So Allah says, until her period, that time period is completed. And he says to us, after telling us this, know this, what lemu, know that surely Allah knows what is inside of you. He knows what's inside of you, what you're feeling, what you're thinking. He says, so fear Allah. What lemu and Allah gafurum halim. And know that Allah is forgiving to all forbearing. Allah knows the matters of the heart. Allah knows what's what's inside of you. Allah knows if 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 if, if you if you're interested in a sister or you don't, or whatever is inside of you. Allah knows that. And Allah knows our strengths and our weaknesses. So Allah knows that, that if this is the end and you 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 hitting, you look at it and you you know she just a uh, husband passed, whatever, but there's a waiting period. And uh, but Allah knows, brother, that's what he's saying. But he, he's saying in that matter, remember he is the the food. He is the forgiving and the forbearing. Following through here. Let, so now we go to 236. 
فَرِيدُ لَهُنَّ فَرِيدَةٍ And that is this. Allah says, There is no sin on you. See how Allah keeps saying, It's, it's nothing wrong with in, in this situation. He says, There's no, and we don't read it, لَا جُنَاهَا عَلَيْكُمْ There's no sin on you, brother, sister. If you divorce a woman, before you have touched her in an intimate way. It's no sin on you if you divorce, you got married. And before you consummated the marriage, before you had sexual intercourse, Allah says, it's no sin on you if before that has happened, right? And you have not fixed the dowry, right? Now you have married, but you have, you have not given and fixed the dowry. You haven't, you haven't fixed, documented, I'm going to give you $2,000. Or I'm going to give you a ring. Now if you divorce them before you have sexual intercourse, and before you have documented, I'm giving you $2,000. Allah say it's no sin on you. If you divorce women before all that happened, it's no sin on you before all that happened. He says, but this, but give them a gift. You got it? You married. You haven't had sexual intercourse. You haven't even locked in what the dowry. I'm going to give her 2,000, 10,000, give you a call, whatever. Allah says, it's no sin on you to divorce then. He says, but the honorable thing is, give her a gift. Give her, give her a gift. Give her something. Let's show you beauty of Quran. Contrast again. Allow Musi'a Kandaruhu. The wealthy according to his ability. Give her a gift. But but this word wasi'at, musi'at, wasi'at is to extend. Wasi al kursi, right? His his don't your to your extent that those who have a large extent of money, right? A large extent of wealth, right? Those who extend, he say, give them a gift according to your capacity, right? Money brothers. So sister, you married one of them heavy hitters. <laughs> Don't accept the Snickers bar as a, as a gift. Okay. So Allah said the wealthy according to his extent. Now his balance. So you know you can probably figure out what comes next. See the balance? Husband, wife. Now what's it going to say here, right? Allah says and it, it uses what Kandaru Kadr, Kadr, right? Little Kadr, according to his power, his ability, right? Then Allah says, Wa Allah Muktiri Kandaruhu Metaim and the needy, the poor, according to his ability. The world, see how the balance, the law says, okay, give her a gift if you're divorcing in this period. The wealthy according to his capacity and the, and the needy, the poor one, according to his capacity. So don't get in the argument and say, okay, you give me a gift. Well, I expected that Mercedes. He say, yeah, but I'm just riding the bike. <laughs> and I give you, so he said, according to your ability, right? So, see how the balance, Allah said the wealthy according to his, the, the, the needy according to his, right? Allah talks about the baby being born, and he's talking about when you die, right? So it's the contrast, husband, wife, mother, father, beautiful balance, wolf star, right? And then Allah says, but, but here's the word again. Make note of this. Bilmarufi. Do all of this in an honorable way. In a reasonable way, a reasonable and honorable way. 
that you got married and it's touchy, right? These things get, get negative, right? But the law is saying, listen, you can divorce. I want you to be together, but you can divorce. But here are the rules. And we read last week where Allah said instructions. He used the word that he revealed the book, the wisdom, and the instructions, right? Here it is. Yeah. He says, Min al kitabi wal hikmati, yet zukum, yet ithukum. So these are instructions in this matter. What would this could bar state from Quran? It's instructions. So he says, but do it maruf in an honorable way. Now, now just picture this. Let, let, let's say, you know, you got married and you find something out. You know, these marriages and divorces get hostile, right? So Allah says, yeah, but keep it cool, bro. You still have to give her a gift. Even if you're not staying together. And the wealthy according to his. And the needy according to his. Maruf in an honorable way. In a reasonable and honorable way. And listen, he says, Ha! You know, hawk, right? Ha! Go! El al Muhsinin. And that's how that ayat 3, 236 ends. And you know what that says? Hakka, truth, right? That is that is an a, a, a obligation, a truth upon those who do good. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Hakka El al Muhsinin. That those who are, and we say, Rabbana anti nafi dunya hasanatain, right? That this, what instructions, is an obligation upon the doers of good. Now, if you don't consider yourself a doer of good, you're going to break the rules, right? So Allah says, this is an obligation on those who hasan, hasana, who do good, that you have to give a gift, brother, regardless. If you marry, you didn't get intimate, and you didn't fix the, the dowry, right? Say what it is, right? Now, show you the, con the, the the balance. Now we go to Ayat 237, right? What in Tolakumu Tolakumu Hune and and that is this. Allah says, here's the contrast. If you divorce women, brother, before you have had an intimate relationship, Next I am, right? Before you have a sexual encounter, right? Before you have had sexual intercourse, right? But you have fixed the dowry. Before you hadn't fixed it and said what it was, so you give them a gift. Here it says, if you have fixed the dowry, if you say, okay, baby, I'm going to give you $2,000, and it's fixed, right? But if you divorce them, you haven't had the sexual intercourse, right? Allah says... If you fixed it, and I'm using them 2,000, right? And you divorce, Allah says, then it has to be split 50-50. <laughs> you haven't touched it, you haven't had intercourse, but you say it, you're giving your word, I'm giving you a $2,000, or I'm giving you a ring, or whatever. So Allah says, okay, it has to be split 50-50. So if you promised her $2,000, then when you divorce her and you still haven't had intercourse, but you fix the dowry, then you give her a thousand and you keep a thousand. Right? But Allah says, and we read that, Allah says, but she can forego that. She could say, never mind. You go ahead and keep the two thousand dollars. Okay? And Allah says, balance. Allah says, the man can do the same thing. He can say, that's all right, baby. I know we're not going to be together. I already fixed this thing. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead and keep the $2,000, right? Okay, she could forego it, but he could too. But here's the wisdom and the strength and the beauty in Quran and these instructions to us, brother. Allah 
process right Allah says well and that fool and this that fool this is this is this is the dog he says this is the um um the pardon the forego to, to forgive it and say you go ahead he says well and that fool Allah says, brother, to forego that and say, go ahead and keep the thousand, two thousand, is closer to taqwa. So he encourages us to do it. He says, karibu, karib is like close relative, right? Ekurabuli taqwa. He says, but for you to go ahead and tell her to keep it is closer to righteousness, closer to to God consciousness. You see, Allah has given us instructions in this marriage, this divorce, this whole process which is touchy, can be sensitive. Allah wants us to be together, but he gives us divorce. But if you've been keeping up, if not, get the CD. Allah has been packaging this thing. And the rules, you can divorce three times. After the third time, she has to marry somebody else. And then if they divorce, then then she can, you can remarry. And Allah said, but don't take her back to hurt her, et cetera, et cetera, right? And we've also been talking, Allah says, that, you know, that he doesn't put a burden beyond your ability to carry. All of this is in Baqarah. So right here, where Allah says, but that is closer to taqwa, that you say, go ahead and keep the $2,000, sister. Okay? And Allah says, voila, then so, well, eh, ten se wu, pardon me, ten se wu, fet dole beinekum. And Allah says, don't forget that Allah has put grace and bounty between you two. See how Allah is dressing this? This can be tight. This can be hostile. It, you, you know how these relationships are, right? We can get pretend that, right? So Allah is saying all of this. But Allah says, but don't forget that there was something good between you one time. Now you might have found out this other stuff afterwards, but Allah said, but don't forget that there was grace and there was bounty between the two of you. So try to do this in the most honorable way. And then Allah closes. And Allah had be mad that my Lord and Basir. For surely Allah sees all that you do. Allah see, we don't see it. You're in the house cussing each other out, pulling out nine, whatever the heck we do, you know how we get mad. And you come out here looking like me, you know, your shot. Mom just arguing with his wife, he made a clock the right, he come out here looking like stuff well, I don't I don't do that, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying Allah see all that you do and your privacy. That's how he called. He said, Remember, there was bounty between you, there was something good between you. Even though you didn't have sex when you got married, even though you didn't fix the diary or you did, you had to take it back. Allah said, but don't forget there was something that drew you together. So try to end this thing with Maruf in an honorable and dignified way. Let us close the first part because this next one is going to, is so powerful that it ties in. It doesn't look like it, but it does. The next I hear. What I've been acting after you doing your house in the thing, what they're acting after your house in the thing, making that up. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi kareem Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So in our next few minutes We're in this section We're going through all of Baqarah And Allah has blessed us This is the 37th week Been going consistent And we're up now to ayat 238 Which is good Now the next ayat, 238, after what we're talking about divorce, look what Allah inserts right in the middle of this whole thing with marriage and divorce. And you heard this. So powerful. And we started out hitting at that wustah. Hafidhu. A hafi. Hafidhu. They translate it, and properly so, God to protect. 
But a, a Hafid has remembered Quran. And that's what they originally did. They, uh, 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 Hafiz, as far as Quran, they would protect the Quran because they committed it. They remembered it so they was a God, right? And if you memorize the Quran and you stand up late in the Salat and you make a slip, one who has memorized it helps you out, right? So that's a protection. So that same word for Hafid means to God and protect, okay? So, Hafidhu al Salat. You see in the middle of all this divorce and stuff, Allah says, God, the Salat. You know, it's their family that prays together, stay together, right? See how I flow right? Hafidhu al Salat was Salat al Wusta. God, the Salat, especially the middle prayer. This is where it falls in, right? In this whole divorce thing. God the Salat, but especially Wusta, the middle one, right? Which is understood to be us. So this whole thing is about balance, going the middle road, even in these matters of divorce. So Allah bring kicks right in. God your Salat, in the middle of all of this, remember your Salat. You're arguing, you're fussing, you're separating, but the key is Salat. Remember Kiyam, stand up for your rights in the marriage. But also, remember Salat, what is he saying? You also have to submit, brothers and sisters. So, you know, now they, I ain't submitting, man. I, I, no, I got rights, man. Allah said, remember the Salat. And what's the Salat? You go to Ruku, right? That's bowing. You have to give and take. You have to submit sometimes, brother. You have to submit sometimes, sister. But by submitting after you have been here, you're going to get back up. Having a humble spirit in marriage, being submissive in marriage, don't hold you down because after that there you says, you come back up, right? Send me Allahu liman hamidah. Allah listen to those who do what? Praise Him. You see? And then after that there, what do you do? You go all the way down and says the so Allah, remember now, I'm not doing this. Allah said, remember the Salat. God, the Salat. Well, this is Salat, right? Not to mention the words. Now you go all the way down to Sajda. In that, in that fetal position, right? Remember how you were. Then you sit back up in Joseph. Then you go down. Now you conclude the Salat. But well, this is connected to marriage and divorce. How do we end the Salat? Listen, sis, we can't make it. It's two people. We can't make it. See you later. Nope. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace be unto you, sister, and the mercy of Allah. Peace be unto you, brother. I know this is a touchy thing. Whatever happened, we can't be together. Peace be unto you, brother. And the mercy of Allah. Then remember, Allah puts it right in there. Remember, God the Salat, right? And particularly, the middle one. Keep this thing balanced and in the middle, not extreme, right? And that's what Allah said. But then we have to close. Allah says this in that same ayat. Helping us. Allah says, Wakumu, that's Kaum. Stand, right? Wa kumu lillahi qalitin. We do kanut no Ramadan, right? Allah says, stand up before Allah. Devout and obedient to Allah. You go on to all of this, remember your prayer. But at the end of the day, sister, end of the day, brother, divorce, whatever you go on, you stand up before Allah as a devout servant of Allah and no one else. You just couldn't make it, whatever it is, right? So we have to close here. So we, we had, I had 2.38. And then, just to let you know as it goes down, it picks up with divorce again. So it lets you know this prayer and all of this is tied in. And all of this, don't forget the salat. A family, as the old book you heard us say, that prays together, potentially can stay together. But even if you don't, remember the Salat. And remember how the Salat, and last thing that's on our mind when we do the Salat is what? Peace be unto you and the mercy of Allah. 
So no matter how you getting up from Salat, husband, wife, or brother, and you want to get in an argument, you want to fight somebody, you just say it, be man. Allah left you with peace and mercy of Allah. So the Salat establishes so much and it gives us such a message. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace be unto you. Now when we see each other, then I have to knock. When we see each other, say assalamu alaikum, right? Peace be unto you. And you only obligate to say, well, alaikum assalam. But look at when you close the salat, it's assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. When he refers, peace be unto you and his mercy. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatain wa fi akhirati hasanatain wa kinadabinna.